Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time for another free app hidden gem video. This one is going to be familiar to many of us nerds, but not possibly to the general population. And that is LibreOffice. This is a free open source office application that runs on the Mac. It runs on Windows, it runs on Linux. You can run it on a Chromebook, which we'll look at later in the video. You can run a version of it that works on mobile devices. And what's nice about this is that it's an old school Office application. It reminds me a lot of some of the earlier versions of Microsoft Office before they went to that subscription model. You own all your files, you're not putting it in somebody's cloud, and it works completely offline. You only have to go online to download updates for it. You don't have all the collaboration that you might get with a Google or Microsoft web-based document editor, but you're also not feeding into who knows what uh, when you upload your files to the cloud. So this might be a good alternative that can save you some money and certainly get you back some privacy. And we're going to dive into LibreOffice in this review. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is not a sponsored video. No one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and check out LibreOffice. Now to install LibreOffice, you head over to LibreOffice.org if you're on Mac or Windows. You go over to Download here and select Download LibreOffice, and most of the time the platform you are using will automatically select Select itself here. One nice thing about LibreOffice is that they have native versions for Apple Silicon along with ARM Windows. So if you have one of those Qualcomm Windows laptops, this will work natively on that uh, for the best power efficiency. And once you get it installed, it is pretty much a old school Office experience here. We've got a word processor that we can load up very quickly here that looks very familiar. What I like about this is that it largely has the old school Office 97 kind of look. You don't have a confusing ribbon interface here. All of your controls are where they need to be. Now, in addition to the word processor, there's also a few other applications that will look very familiar if you've ever used Microsoft Office. They have a spreadsheet here called Calc, and this is the Excel alternative, of course. They have a PowerPoint alternative called Impress, and you can do your presentations in here. And all three of these applications are compatible with Microsoft Files. So if somebody emails you a Word doc, you can open it right up in here, edit it, and send it back. The same is true of the Excel and PowerPoint alternatives here, although there are some compatibility issues you'll run into with more complex documents. They also have a database application here called Base. This is not compatible, at least with the files that would come out of Microsoft Access, but it does support ODBC, so you could connect to an Access database and use that data that way, or just create its own database on your computer. They also have two other applications that might be of interest. They have a paint slash drawing application here called LibreOffice Draw, so you can draw stuff if you want. Uh, they also have this math calculator that allows you to do some pretty complex formulas. This one goes a little over my head here, uh, but you do have something that I don't think is on the regular Microsoft Office suite. So that is the baseline applications that you get with this. Let's take a look and see how it works. So I've got a folder full of files here that we're going to play around with. The first one is a spreadsheet that I normally use on Google Sheets. And this is a spreadsheet that tracks performance data from all of the computers that I review here on the channel. Every time I run a benchmark, the data goes into this Google Sheet. Now, as you can see, this originally started life as an Excel file, and it's been worked on inside of Google Sheets. I can download this as an Excel file, which I did. And if I double click on this here and open it up in the LibreOffice Calc app, you can see it largely lines up from a formatting perspective. Even these numbers that are too large are too large here as well. So all in, it seems to be a good compatible alternative to Excel. I did try a few other spreadsheets earlier that are doing different types of calculations and all of that seem to carry over well too. What won't work are some of the features that might be unique to Google Sheets that can pull data in from other sources or some of that Gemini AI stuff that you might do. That of course won't work here with LibreOffice. But as far as basic compatibility is concerned and being able to edit a file that somebody sends you and save it and send it back, uh, you can do that here. So I'll make a quick change. I'll click on Save. Now it is prompting me here to perhaps use their open source file format called ODF. And right now this 
dialog comes up by default just to remind you that there's another option here. I'm going to keep it in Excel, uh, but that will allow us to open this up in Excel without issue. So we can quit this and I can jump back over here and go to open with Excel and we'll get that file up with the uh, cursor right where we left it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what I'm also going to do though is save it in the other format. So let's go back to LibreOffice Calc and I'll add some more data to it here. I will click save. This time I'm going to use the ODF format and create a new spreadsheet. So this one's going to be an ODF spreadsheet. Now in the past this would throw you off the rails because Microsoft wasn't working with ODS files, but guess what? Now it does. So I can go over here to Excel and Excel will be able to parse that ODS file and open it up. So there's a lot of cross compatibility here, even if you're using the ODF format, which is the default for uh, Calc here and the other applications that we'll be playing with. Now, one thing that LibreOffice is really good at is opening up really old files. And I've got a 30 year old Word doc from the Mac version of Microsoft Word that I did on my PowerBook back in the summer of 94. If I go over to Microsoft Word and point it at this file, it says it can't open it. The file's too old. So we'll close that out. But if we go to LibreOffice and select the writer here, the file comes right up like nothing ever happened. And this is something that can be very useful if you've got some old files kicking around that can't open up on the current version of Word or Excel or whatever. And they support a lot of old file types. So what we can do here is select uh, the pull down and you can see just what it supports. It even supports stuff like Lotus Word Pro, which is something that I used back in the day. My success in opening Word Pro files has been mixed with this. So I think there might be some older versions of Word Pro that aren't compatible, but as you can see here, they support a lot. You can even open up DBase DBFs in here too. So there's a lot of fun that you can have just using LibreOffice to poke around at some of the old files you might have in your uh, floppy disk collection somewhere. So let's take a look now at some presentations. I'm actually going to start in Microsoft PowerPoint so we can see how formatting and animations work between these two applications. So inside of PowerPoint, I've got something that I built basically from a template, although I added a few transitions in here. I also want you to note that it's warning me about backing up the document. They are desperate for me to put this file in their cloud, which was one of the motivators for making this video in the first place. But why don't we go ahead here and just play the presentation. So I'm going to click on the play button here. And as I scroll through the presentation, you can see we had a cross dissolve there and we have an animation here. Uh, moving from one slide to the next. So you've got a feel for how that works. So we're going to close out of PowerPoint. I'm going to go back to that presentation. This time I'm going to open it up with Impress, which is the LibreOffice version of this. And as you can see, things here I think look pretty much the same. Let me go through each slide. I just messed up uh, where I was located scrolling here. You might see some font issues between the applications, but it looks pretty good here as I'm going through the deck. So that looks good. And why don't we play it quickly and just see how this works. So we're going to start from the first slide here. So that's good. And we get the cross dissolve, we get the push. So a lot of the basic animations here carry over. I could do some changes here and say the power of lawn.tv and I can save this. We'll probably get that warning about the file format, but we'll leave it in that format and we'll close it out and we'll save it again maybe, <laughs> there it goes. And we'll go back to PowerPoint, just make sure that that change made it back in without getting things all screwed up. And as you can see here, it all looks the same. So nice cross compatibility here between versions. And I do want to go back to that folder real quick because I got a super old PowerPoint presentation that I want to try to open up. So here I've got a PowerPoint presentation that I made when I was a senior in college in 1997, likely using Windows 95. And if I try to open it in the modern version of PowerPoint here, uh, what we're going to get is this message saying, sorry, we can't open these old files. You need to get an old version of PowerPoint somewhere. But don't despair because LibreOffice Impress has you covered. If I click on it here, just like that old Word doc, it comes right up here and we can go through the file. Now we have some font issues here. I probably had some wacky TrueType font that uh, was where that Fall Fest thing is. 
I also remember the text on this not being black against that blue background, so I'm sure there are some uh, things that you might have to do to tweak it to get it working again. But the photos look great. Uh, this came off of a digital camera that I bought uh, back in 1997, so I was doing a lot of cool, innovative things with my presentations back then because I had a digital camera. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool to be able to load up some of these old files. Now, as far as the word processor is concerned, it actually does a pretty good job even with more complex documents. So we're gonna start off again in Microsoft Word, and this is a template that I downloaded from Microsoft, and of course you replace all the headings and images with your own. So you can see what it looks like in Word, and here is what it looks like in LibreOffice. It's actually pretty close, I think, to what the Word document looked like here. So the pictures are largely in the same place, it did get screwed up over here where it added an extra page in, so I'm sure we could adjust that. So it won't be perfect, but by and large, everything is in the same spot minus the uh, extra page break here. So I think from a compatibility standpoint, if people are sending you relatively simple documents to work on, you can go back and forth here pretty easily. And what's nice is that Microsoft and Google are supporting this open document format. So even if you don't change the default settings on uh, the LibreOffice suite for when you save a new document, it will be compatible with somebody that you email it to. Now, if you wanted LibreOffice to default to saving documents to the Microsoft format, for example, you can do that. You go over to Tools, you go to Options, you go to the Load Save option here, go to General, and then in Always Save As, I would just select the Word 2010 to 365 document option here. But you could even go old school. You could have it save it as Word 97 if you wanted to. So you have a lot of options for default file formats, but it will default to the open document format uh, just based on the open source nature of the software here. Now, as cool as all of this is, LibreOffice is still very old school when it comes to file management and collaboration. So for example, on Google, I can load up a Google Doc or a Google spreadsheet. I can have 15 people working on it with me. I can see all the stuff that they're doing in real time. That doesn't happen on LibreOffice. LibreOffice uh, spreadsheets do have the option for a collaborative feature where multiple people can work on the spreadsheet at the same time, but changes are not shown in real time. It only pops up every time you save. So this is really a one-to-one -one kind of document editor. So keep that in mind. And it's also hard to manage the files for mobile devices because if you're not using the cloud, you've got to figure out some way to get your own personal cloud working in a way that your Android and iPhone users can get access to files. Now on both iOS and Android, there's an app called Collabra Office. And I'm gonna load it up here real quick and pull up that Microsoft Word template we were looking at earlier. So I can go in here and view the file. I can click the edit button and add some additional text here. I'm, I'm mess, missing up my test there. Uh, and then hit the plus button and that will resave the file. I could go back to my computer and open it up and continue editing. So you do have some degree of mobile access here, but again, nowhere near as robust as what you would get through Microsoft or Google's cloud services. On Android, they have a LibreOffice app and that app will allow you to view documents and in beta edit them. Uh, but again, your editing, as you just saw, is very, very limited with these apps, and it's something to keep in mind, especially if you're using your phone a lot to work on documents on the go. So before we close out, let's take a look at getting this working on Chromebooks. I've got a Chromebook out here, and what you need to do first is install the Linux development environment. The best way to get into that is to go into your settings. If you click on the lower right-hand corner and then click the gear icon, and do a search for Linux. And then you will see the Linux development environment option here. We're gonna click on setup and get this going. And I'll just go with the defaults here and let that download and do its thing. So while, while Linux is loading, I'm gonna take a quick break here. And when we come back, I'll show you the next step in getting this to install. Now, when the Linux environment is done installing, you will get a command prompt like you see here. If for some reason you don't see it or you closed it by accident, you should be able to find the command prompt icon down here on your taskbar, or you can go into the application tray here to find it there. It's gonna look like a standard Chrome OS app. Now we have to do some commands here to get this installed. The first one is to type in sudo apt update. And what this will do is update all the package listings for the software that we want to install. So we're gonna let that do its thing. It just takes a second for it to process all of this. 
And then when that's done, you just type in sudo apt install LibreOffice. And this will take a little bit of time because it is a large application. Um, what you do here is answer yes or hit enter, and it will go ahead and do some magical stuff here in the command prompt. And when it's done, you will have LibreOffice installed. So why don't we let this thing do whatever it's doing? And when it's done, we will see how to get LibreOffice working on this Chromebook. All right, our Chromebook is done installing. And once everything is installed, we don't need this command prompt anymore. So we can just type in exit and that will go away. I'll close out this window and I'll close this one. And now you'll see on our taskbar here that we have some of the applications already installed. So I can click on uh, the sheets or the uh, spreadsheet icon here for calc and this will load up our LibreOffice spreadsheet. You do get a pretty large uh, title bar up here at the top. It's just a little weirdness from Chrome OS, but we've got ourselves the full Office suite here that we can access. More of your apps will be found inside of your Chrome OS start button, and you will see an option on here for Linux apps. So the rest of our uh, Office suite here is located in there, including the PowerPoint alternative and other things. So it's pretty easy to get this going, just a couple of quick commands, and then you can use the regular Chrome OS interface to work with it. And what's cool is that these are all running locally on this Chromebook. We don't need to be on the internet to make it work. When I save a file, it will save it on the Chromebook's internal storage. And to get at this storage, what you can do is go over to the Chrome Files app. So we'll jump back in here and just find the Files app wherever it lives. My stuff got out of order here. And if we go to Files, what you will see is an option here for Linux files, and that's where our file is located. So you can email the file out of here. Um, it's not always so simple to get files out of a Chromebook, but if you wanted to work on documents offline on your Chromebook and never have them touch the cloud, you can do it in here and then transfer them over your network uh, when you're home to uh, secure storage. So pretty cool that you can get this to work on a Chromebook just like you can on a Mac or PC. So that'll do it for this look at LibreOffice. You can't beat the price on this. The tools here are quite robust and very similar to what you might get with Microsoft Office on the desktop. In some ways, I found it to be a lot simpler to use and that you don't have all of the crazy interface design choices that Microsoft has made recently that actually confuse me quite a bit. It's nice to have an old school interface here. But because this is old school, you are responsible for managing your files. You gotta back them up and know where you put them, but you don't have to worry about your files living in somebody else's computer and having some AI agents scraping through them all day long. These belong to you. You can keep them private and off the internet, just like it used to be. And if that's appealing to you and you don't want to pay monthly fees to a cloud provider, I think LibreOffice is a good choice. Just know you don't get the robust collaboration features that we get now with 365 and Google. But again, we get the control and privacy. So let me know what you thought about this one. I do have some things I'm looking at for replicating that Google Doc kind of experience on our own hardware. So maybe we'll look at that in the near future. But until then, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.